The key reason for this scenario is the similarity between rocks from Earth and the Moon. We'll focus on oxygen. Among all chemical elements, oxygen has a combination of properties that make it uniquely important in solar system development studies. It's a principal constituent in most minerals, rocks and water. In addition, it's light enough with eight protons to have three stable isotopes, one with eight neutrons, oxygen 16, one with nine neutrons, oxygen 17, and one with 10 neutrons, oxygen 18. With modern mass spectrometers, we can accurately count atoms with different masses even if the difference is only one neutron. We'll cover mass spectrometers a bit later in this chapter. You'll recall that the elements contained in the molecular cloud fragment that formed the Sun and the solar system were distributed throughout the cloud. But the ratios of various elements will vary at different distances from the center as the solar wind impacts lighter materials more than heavier ones. Because oxygen combines to make gases like carbon monoxide and H2O water vapor, and also combines to make solids like iron oxides and silicates. It would have separated into various reservoirs early in the solar system development with varying percentages of each isotope. This makes it a natural tracer for identifying different reservoirs and the objects they eventually formed. Here on Earth, we find that 99.76% of the oxygen is oxygen 16. Only 0.4% is oxygen 17, and two tenths of a percent is oxygen 18. But physical processes can change these ratios for any particular sample. One of the best examples of this is water evaporation. The lighter isotope, oxygen 16, tends to evaporate faster than oxygen 18. This makes the ratio of 18 over 16 larger in a water sample and smaller in an air sample. The same process will play out for oxygen 17 proportionally by mass. The process is called isotopic fractionation. To take deviations like this into account, scientists measure the variations in the ratios of 17 over 16 and 18 over 16 against a standard called the Vienna Standard Mean Ocean Water. Here's a graph that maps the 17 over 18 ratios for various substances, limestones, basalts, quartz, air, and ice. Note that all the data points fall on a line. It's called a terrestrial fractionation line. All oxygen on Earth fits on this line. Additionally, the fact that Earth's water fractionation is on the same line as the Earth's rock fractionation indicates that the water and rocks formed in the same place. The lines are quite different for meteorites. The Ayande meteorite that struck Mexico is a good example. A number of minerals were examined. None of the oxygen isotope ratios fell on the terrestrial fractionation line. The Ayande line is different because the oxygen isotope percentages in the volume of the circumstellar disk where the meteor formed were different. A team of scientists from Switzerland and the U.S. analyzed over 30 moon rock samples across 15 rock types from Apollo 11, 12, 15, 16, and 17. Every single one fit on the terrestrial fractionation line. Here we have shown just three of them. This indicates that the rocks on the moon and the rocks on the earth formed in the same place. This in turn supports the idea that the Thea collision hit with sufficient force to homogenize the two planets' mantles. This also supports the idea that Thea brought us our water. We have already determined that the earth's water and rocks formed in the same place. And given that the Earth originally formed without water, 
Thea must have formed in the outer solar system with lots of water. When it collided, its water became a part of the homogenized mantles for the Earth and the Moon. The reason all this is important for our how old is the Earth purposes is that the homogenized mantle would have been completely magma. Thus, the rocks that formed from this magma will be the oldest rocks on Earth. And the same would hold true for the moon.